Hey everyone, I recruited a special guest to help me introduce Unit 5. We cover the topic of heredity. You probably know him best from his YouTube channel. I don't think you really need an introduction, but I'm going to go ahead and do one anyway. Uh, so I'm really excited today to be talking with Paul Anderson. He is the creator of the Bozeman Science YouTube channel. He also has created the Wonder of Science website, which has amazing resources for NGSS. And uh, he is an education consultant and keynote speaker. And Paul, I'm so excited that you're joining me today. Absolutely, yeah. Sounds like you've got a cool project going on, so it's nice to be a part. Uh, I shared with you that the reason that I was hoping to talk with you today is that you have a unique genetic trait that you actually taught about in some of your Bozeman science videos. Uh, you are colorblind, or should we say color vision deficient? Do you have a preference there? I, I don't think about it that much, but yeah, I would not, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself colorblind, but I'm color deficient. Yeah, it yeah. shows up mostly on my uh, poor choice in clothing. I kind of have to run everything by my wife because it, <laughs> it's some interesting combinations for sure. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering, outside of that, could you tell a little bit about how or what it's like to be colorblind or how you perceive colors differently? Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think there's a misconception that you don't. I remember talking about this in class where the kids would be like, what color is that? What color is that? And they want you to just, they think you don't, you, you can't see color at all, which is not, I I, ha, I did have a student one that was, that was like completely colored, like blind and they couldn't wow. recognize different colors as, I think that's really, really rare. But for me, uh, certain colors of like reds and greens will kind of blend together and I have a hard time like determining like what's what. I think the biggest, I remember did, I was a coach and so I used to drive the bus for uh, at the school that I was at. And so I had to do, I had to get a physical. And as a part of that, they show you a bunch of plates of different, it's the things you've probably seen before where it's like, what is the number or what is the sequence that's in here? And I remember- like The Ishihara plates, right? The, yeah. Yeah, so the Ishihara test. And I remember some of them were very, they think they start you off with really easy ones. And then mm -hmm. I just, yeah, there are a lot of them where I couldn't tell. Even when you, I think you sent me notes and there's a little image in there yeah. that I'm looking at. And I can't really, I can tell the number, but it, I'm not sure exactly what the number is. Look, Almost every year a student will ask me, well, how would somebody know that they're colorblind? Like, how do they figure it out in the first place? Because everything to them just looks like it's always looked. Right. So I'm wondering, what is your story when you found out that you had color vision deficiency? Were you a kid? You know, were you, uh, how did it happen? Yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't remember if it was in university when I figured it out or if it was when I was coaching later in life. But I don't think I knew until I looked at these like color vision tests. Yeah. So I think before that, I just felt like I had normal color vision. Yeah. Um, after that, it does start to manifest in different ways. I remember talking to a friend who was also color deficient and he had bought some of those glasses that like correct it. Right. And so we were sharing ways, like things that we see. And I think that by talking to other people, mm -hmm. then I remember one we were talking about where the stoplights where you have like red, orange, green. Yeah. And the green there is always, to me, looked kind of like white. And it almost looks like, I always thought it was just the way the lights are made. And <laughs> I yeah. think it's just like, it's something that I just don't, I just don't pick up on that green color. So it's that, yeah. like shared experience with other people who, yeah, who can see things that you can't or see things in the same way. I think that's how you figure out almost all kind of phenomena like that. Yeah, the story that I wanted to use to begin this unit was actually a friend of mine. Um, so he's a retired teacher that I used to work with. And so one year he's teaching a 10th grade biology class. And um, so he's going to teach about genetic traits and color vision deficiency is one that they're going to look at they open up, he has his class open up their textbooks and they open up to a reproduction of one of the Ishihara color plates, like what we were talking about earlier. Right, right, right. And a girl in the class is looking at it and he said, you should see a number. I don't remember which number it was. You yeah. should see a number when you look at this. 
and she doesn't see the number. So she's turning to her friends in class and saying, is he for real? And, and they said, well, I, I see a number. And he thought that this was an elaborate joke that everybody was in yeah. on and that yeah. it was fake, right? That they were trying to trick her into thinking right. something, but, you know, eventually she came to, um, you know, kind of accept like everyone else in my class is seeing this and I'm not. So sure. she was in 10th grade and she, you know, hadn't realized up to that point that she didn't see certain colors the same way that, that her classmates were. Um, and I, so, I think, I mean, I think it almost all AP teachers would have a similar story. So like I uh -huh. would always, when I would talk about it and I, I, I think I made a video. You must know. I don't really know what videos I've made because I've made so many, but I'm sure there's a video where I show like that image probably in a video. And I'm sure certain kids are watching yeah. that and realizing, oh, I can't see it either. Or I have a different yeah. kind of a vision. Yeah. So I had students I remember in class that would be had similar experiences. And, and one student, I don't know if I mentioned again, but was like, couldn't see any color, which was just fascinating to me. So let me tell you a little bit more about um you know, that girl in my friend's class who, um, you know, found out that she's, she's colorblind. Um, so, and, and by the way, this is my friend's story. It's not the, this is Noel's story and saying it's about a friend. Um, no, this is, you oh. actually have a friend. <laughs> no, this is actually a friend of mine <laughs> happened to him. So, um, it's yeah. Good. So once she went home later that day, she like she was really locked into this lesson after learning that she was colorblind, like she was fascinated. So she really wanted to understand the inheritance, right? Like how did, how did this happen to me? How did I wind up, you know, with, uh, you know, being colorblind. So she took her book home and she was talking about this with her parents over dinner. Right. So she was explaining the inheritance to them. And during the unit, you know, the students are going to learn about how this all works. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, we won't give away too much right now. But um, she opened up her book to the Ishihara plate. And she had been explaining the inheritance to her parents. And she showed the reproduction to her mom. And her mom said, well, I can see the number. And she said, well, that makes sense, mom. You know, and then the book was passed over to her dad and he took a look at the book and got really serious and really quiet. And then all of a sudden just erupted. And this leads to a huge fight between the parents. And um, it, it escalated pretty quickly. The family was really upset, like this poor girl you know, she goes home, she's sharing something with her parents that she learned in class. And she then is thinking that it's going to lead to her parents getting a divorce. Oh, my gosh. My parents were really upset with my friend. Like they filed complaints with the school administration. Um, and a little bit later, I'll, I'll tell you the resolution. Now, that'll save for the follow up video that students. That are sounds getting. good. Yeah, no, you got me. It's an interesting story. Yeah. Booked. Uh, it's interesting, um, I was working with a teacher. She had talked about giving the 23 and me, she'd done testing and then it came back and it's like, you have, here's your uh, two brothers and like two sisters. And she's like, I only have one sister. <laughs> and then it was like, oh wow. Oh, yeah, so it led to a similar thing and she showed me the photo and they're good friends now, but it is. I had such an amazing time talking with Paul. We even got to talk about a few fun questions too. Here's one of them. I would like you to imagine that for 24 hours, you could be any animal that you would like to be. What would you pick and why? Yeah, I'm always like, my favorite animal is always humans because humans are fascinating to me. But I also like my second favorite is probably the octopus. I find that like their intelligence and their vision seems like parallel to ours, but also way different. So like, Mm -hmm. I would love to know what it feels like to see the world as an octopus with like brains in your tentacles and like color and sensing smells. Yeah, I would love that. That'd be cool. Well, thank you so much. And I'm sure we'll connect at some point. Best of luck with the, the year. All right. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate awesome. it. Bye. Cheers.